All right, folks, the big question, can Donald Trump win? What does it take to get to 270 electoral votes? I'm going to break this down like you've never seen before. This is The Sean Spicer Show. Let's get into it. All right, welcome to the show, guys. Uh, We talk all the time about who's going to win, what polls say. But at the end of the day, we've talked about this before, this comes down to electoral votes in the 50 states. You need 270 electoral votes to win. So today, I'm going to do something that I don't think you're going to see anywhere else on any other podcast, on written, on a show. We're going to go through the map. And we're going to show you what the paths, because there's plural, it's not just one path, what the path to 270 looks like. And I think, frankly, some of the, uh, the stumbling blocks, the closeness about how some of these states, if you put one into one column and one into another, how it can really change the game and how close I think this election is really going to be and why each state will matter especially the ones that we always talk about, those battleground states. We're going to go to them, and I'm going to walk you through each one. So if you want, get your pen and paper out or just bookmark. This is probably better. This is the right time, by the way, if you want to subscribe to the show, do it now. Hit that subscription button, share the show. This is one you're going to want to save because as you get ready for the holidays and your crazy uncle or your nutty cousin says, Trump can't win, blah, 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 blah. You're going to want to go, yes, he can. Let me explain the math to you. Because the problem is so many of these people live in blue states and they don't think anyone else thinks like them. Or you actually have some folks on our side that need to understand the math as well. And I'm going to equip you with exactly what it takes to understand, as I said, not just the path, but the paths, plural, to 270. But also I think we're going to get to some brass tacks when it comes to how close some of these states are. And think about this. Georgia last time was 11,709 votes, 0.23, right? Arizona, 0.31, 10,457 votes. Together, that's 27 electoral votes. You look at Wisconsin, which is 0.6, 20,000 votes, 10 electoral votes, you, that, you add those together and you're at 37 electoral votes. Just in those three states alone, think about that swing, how much that matters. We would, Joe Biden wouldn't have gotten a 270 without those three states. Think about that right now, just off the top of your head math, you're talking about 42,000 votes. 42,000 votes decided the presidential election. So I say all that because we're going to do this in a map that you will be able to see on screen. All right, I'm going to pause for a second. I want to tell you about two of the amazing sponsors that allow this show to be free. We have been so blessed by our sponsors. It truly is. I, I love doing this because I can take a show and break down how this election is going to go in a way that nobody else will. You will not hear this anywhere else. But I can do it because the sponsors of this show have been committed to making sure that we can do this. And so if you want to watch this on YouTube or the first on Channel 347 or Vizio or Samsung, all the platforms that's on, or you want to listen on Apple, you can. But we're going to show you this interactive map after I tell you about two of the sponsors that make it possible, and then we'll break it down for you. All right, guys, when we lose power, whether it's because our power grid gets hit or a power line goes down or natural disaster strikes, whether it's a day or a week or a month, if you've been subject to this, you know what I'm talking about. You're trying to figure out how you're going to power your phone, your computer, your medical devices. I mean, your refrigerator, all that food. Well, I've got the answer for you because I have in my house a Patriot Power Generator 2000X. And if you go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer, you can have one too, right? This is the kind of thing that you want to get ahead of when an emergency hits. Whether it's you, your family, a neighbor, a loved one, you want to make sure that you can take them. And the Patriot Power Generator is completely portable. Now, you can look on the video that I've got up there. I've got it in my house. There are no fumes, no gas to fill it up with. It's got no noise. You bring it into your house. You can bring it wherever you go if you needed to bring it to a friend's house. And it's completely powered through solar panels. So you don't have to worry about going out and getting and refilling it with gas. 
You can bring it into the house and then power it up through the power of the sun with a solar panel that comes free with it. Get ahead of a crisis now. Go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer and get your Patriot Power Generator 2000X so you can be prepared like I am. All right, if you're up and about all day and you've got tired feet, I've got the solution for you. Gravity Defier shoes. They are the ultimate in comfort shoes. They support you when you're on the go. So if you're running errands, you're on the sideline with the kids at all their games, you're in meetings day in and day out, this is the answer you've been looking for. Every single pair of Gravity Defier shoes comes with custom orthotics. You know what I'm talking about if you've had feet issues or you're getting tired all day. Custom orthotics are the answers. And these shoes all have the Verso patented trampoline technology in them that adds a level of cushion in the heel right where you need it most. That's gonna help absorb shock throughout the day to give you back some of that energy, right? And the shoes also will improve your posture. It helps with stress. It helps put the key muscle groups into action. We're talking your calves and other major muscle groups so that you're using the right muscles as you walk around. There are countless customer reviews that talk about the positive results of Gravity Defier shoes. The best part is right now, if you go to gdefy.com and enter code SPICER30, go to gdefy.com, enter the code SPICER30, you get $30 off your $150 order. You can go there right now, $30 off $150 order if you go to gdefy.com and enter code word SPICER30. All right, guys, here we go. So what I want to do, and if you want, if you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble or Spotify or or Spotify or Apple, if you're listening, um, you can go back, you can listen to it now, and then you can go back and do the map for yourself. So we're going to go to 270 towincom And there's a few other ones. I just, this one's easiest to play with. So let's, let's bring the map up if we can through the magic of television. I'm going to bring this up and we're going to start to show you how it works. So you can see up top, zero, zero. It's like a game here. The score is zero to zero. I'm just going to give you some context. They've got, when they, when they do these maps online, and like I said, there's a few other options that you can go to sites. I like this one because of the way that you can see that you can do it just not only red and blue, but light blue and, and pink so that it, it's a shade, right? And we'll, we'll show, we'll talk about that in just a second as we shade these. Um, but, one of the things that I like is it will also show you, like if you want to see what the real clear politics average of the polls has these things, or what they call the consensus map, which is what they take all of them, compile them, and, and show you an average, right, where it all comes down. And so if you look at the consensus average right now, um, you've got this at about, I think it's like 231 to 235. That's where they're basically saying 231 is in the Biden camp, 235 is in the Trump camp. I I just wanted to give you some context as to where we're starting. I'm going to start from zero because I want that. I want you to understand how we build the map. But I want to give you a sense of like where I think, generally speaking, polling suggests this race right now. We're going to get all the way out there. Um, I do want to sort of also give you some context. In 2016, Trump had 304 electoral votes. He won states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, right? Uh, Pennsylvania, 19 electoral votes. Michigan, 15. Wisconsin, 10. That's a, I mean, th- that's it. That's how Trump won. But those, those states hadn't been won by a Republican in decades. That was the key. And I went, I said before at the beginning how close Georgia, Arizona, and Wisconsin were in 2020. Likewise, I tell you all the time, you've heard, if you watch the show all the time, Michigan was 0.22 of a percent in 2016, 10,700 votes. So we know among the seven-ish battleground states, this is going to be close. And I'm going to show you as we go through this, how much in 2020, Biden basically replicated Trump as far as the Electoral College. He got 306, Trump had 232. That's basically identical. We're switching around a few of these states. But it was like 70,000 over three states in 2016, 40,000 the last time. This is where the battleground is. So so let's let's kind of start with this. I'm going to start with the states that Biden is pretty much going to win. Now, if you're watching this and you start to disagree with me with the state, well, then do your own map and, and, sh- and see how it plays out. And look, here we are early in the process. As the s- 
election, the general election continues to move forward, we're going to have some states move. I know that. We may see some additional states come into play. We may see some additional states move out of range on both sides. So we'll do this again at some point as we get closer and closer to the election. And, and I'm not saying that you know Trump can't win a, a particular state or Biden's going to guarantee it. I just want to start the conversation now. So don't get mad at me if you say, why did you put this state in? I think it's winnable. Okay, maybe it is. I'm not trying to, I'm just, I want to set the stage for where we are politically. So let's start on the West Coast with the Biden states. Let's just kick it off with California. Boom. So let's shade that blue. We're going to hit the button, the blue button there. We're going to put it in. There we go. 54 electoral votes. Now, if you think about this real, just give you, I'm going to explain something really interesting. The Democrats pick up these big states and we'll see it as the map goes through. They don't have clear, definitely the number of states or the territory that Republicans do, but they start off really easy. I mean, it's like starting a football game up 14, nothing. They get 54 electoral votes with California alone. So let's move a little north, okay? Oregon, eight electoral votes. Let's pop that in. Okay, you can see right now, we're already at 62. I mean, 62 electoral votes um, for, for the Dem side. Let's keep going north and put Washington in there. And I don't think that there's anyone that's gonna, I mean, I don't know about you. I don't think those three states are even questionable. Um, so we'll slow the roll. So we're at 74 right now. As you can see, just those, those alone, that West Coast slice, 74 electoral votes. That's a pretty nice way to start a game. All right. I want to start moving a little east. Just for the record, my geography is horrible. So, I mean, I just, I'll admit that my grammar and my spelling, no bueno. My geography is right up there too. Uh, but let's just pop over to Colorado uh, and we're going to add the 10 electoral votes that Colorado has in there. Now, again, I, Colorado, everybody always once in a while says, oh, Colorado, maybe we could, maybe. But we're early enough in this cycle. I don't see any signs that Colorado is looking good for us. Um, we're going to have some congressional seats there that are in play, but there's no question statewide, not going to happen. All right. Um, we are now at 84 electoral votes for Biden and we've only touched four states. So again, as I move a little across, uh, I'm going to put New Mexico's five electoral votes in the Biden column. I could see something coming down the road eventually in the cycle where New Mexico is in play. Maybe I know we've got a couple congressional districts there, uh, but let's not kid ourselves. Right now, there's no one that honestly thinks New Mexico is in play presidentially. If you're on YouTube and you disagree with me or Rumble or whatever, give me a comment. You can always go to the website, seanspicer.com, join the show at seanspicershow.com slash VIP um, and, and join the VIP discussion. We try to do these weekly back and forth. Okay. Uh, that's, you, you can make the case on any state. I'll listen to it. But right now, there's no polling that indicates that that's like... One quick note that I want to make right here. So you look at New Mexico, California, and you're going to see this in several other states. In campaign world, we would say that there are some states that are not battleground states, like California, New Mexico, Colorado, even, and they have what we call, we, we call in the in the in the industry orphan districts. What does that mean? It means that there's no get out the vote effort statewide. So in California. That Senate race is not going to be close. Adam Schiff will win the race big time. There's no other Republican that's running statewide. So if you're in a congressional district in California or New Mexico or Colorado or New York that aren't battleground states, the NRCC, the National Republican Congressional Committee, and this is true to some degree, and I'm, I'll, I'll think about it as we go through the map, with some of the Senate seats. They are what they call orphan districts, meaning they will still go in and try to make sure that there's a get out the vote effort that is run at the congressional level. Because when you're running in a battleground state, right? So if you're in Pennsylvania, like if you're Dave McCormick, who's running for Senate in Pennsylvania, you know the presidential campaign is going to be doing the get out the vote effort. That takes a lot of weight off your shoulders, a lot of resources lifted off the campaign because you know that the party and 
the campaign at the presidential level are going to do that. But if you're David Valdeo, uh, Valadeo in California or young Kim, uh, that's not going to happen. Right. So you need to have your get out the vote effort. It's just something that you need to be aware of if you're politically savvy. OK, uh, let's see where I'm going to go from here. Uh, I want to keep going a little eastward. I'm going to put Minnesota's 10 electoral votes in the thing. Can we shade that, though, light blue, light blue if we can? And, and I uh, so we'll put it in a column. I will say that, look, Minnesota is a state that um, if Trump were to expand the map, that's one of the states that I think he could challenge. It was very close in 2016, not so close in 2020. In 2020, he lost by seven points. But it's probably worth keeping its eye on. I think there's some demographics in that state that make it interesting to watch, okay? Um, all right, let's keep moving. We're gonna go east, I think, right? This is, <laughs> this is where my geography gets challenged. Let's put Illinois in its 19 electoral votes in the Biden column, okay? So we can see that we're well over 100 now for Biden. We're at 118. This is, I mean, and, and look at how little blue is on the table, on the map. That's, that says a lot, right? So he's at 118 and we're at what? What, six states? Okay. So let's jump north and east and then we'll work down. All right, I'm gonna start with Maine because it's at the top of the map. This allows me to have this conversation interestingly here. So Maine has four electoral votes. There are two states that break up their electoral votes by congressional district. What does that mean? Every other state in the union, you win the state, you get all of their electoral votes. Every state gets two Senate, two electoral votes because of their Senate representation. Every state has two, so you get two. And then you get an additional electoral vote for every congressional district. So you take California, it has two senators and 52 members of Congress, 54 electoral votes. My home state of Rhode Island has four, two senators, two members of Congress. Maine has four as well, okay? But Maine and Nebraska divide the congressional district electoral vote up to who won it. So you win the state of Maine, you get two electoral votes for the statewide win. Those are your two Senate electoral votes. And then they award each of the congressional districts by whomever won that congressional district. Now, interestingly, both Maine and Nebraska have an interesting dynamic, and we'll, we'll get to the Nebraska one, uh, which is very similar when we do the Trump states. But since this is a Biden state, he will carry the statewide. We're gonna put Maine as a solid blue state, but Maine congressional district two, the second district will be red. And I'll, let's put that, if we can just mark the blue box that's currently number two for Maine on there on the right, we're gonna give that a red one. We'll put that in the Trump column now just so that we don't forget about it, okay? But, that's how, so three of Maine's votes will go to Biden. The other one will go to Trump, most likely, okay? Obviously, that's just how it's been going, and I think we'll continue to see that. As we move south here in the Northeast down, we get to Vermont. Three electoral votes there, because you got the two senators, Bernie Sanders. I do a pretty good Bernie Sanders, by the way. Uh, I'll save you that for now. Uh, and then you've got one congressional district. So you got three. All three of those are going to go for Biden. Okay, so add the three. Then here's where it gets interesting. You move a little south and you hit New York. 28 electoral votes go right into the Biden campaign there. Okay, so let's add the New York ones. Bring the map back into focus for a second if you can. And I want to just show you, again, look at the limited amount of blue that's there. Once you add New York in this, you got New York and California, right? You're at 152. You're just 120 short. That's why I think the Dems literally start this game with such an advantage, because of, especially because when you just take New York's 28 and California, and you're, at eight, you're over 80 votes. I mean, that's not a bad way to start a game, is it? Those are the big prizes outside of Texas, obviously, and Florida. Anyway, all right, let's keep moving south. Massachusetts, again, I don't think there's any question. Uh, all 11 of Massachusetts electoral votes are gonna be in the blue. And you can see on the right-hand side there, they, because they're such small states, you actually have to, they have to pull them out a little. Um, Rhode Island's four. I mean, again, no question about it. 
There's a big, tr- I, I will say this, I was surprised in 2016 anyway, there's a big working class element in a lot of New England that I think spoke to Trump. I don't think he can win the states, but I think you got a lot of working class men and women throughout the Northeast, blue collar folks who really believe in, in um, Trump standing up for the working men and women. It's just an interesting dynamic that I see. Whenever I go up to New England, it's those people, the servers, the Uber drivers, um, people who are who are in that service industry somehow, maybe landscaping, whatever. And I'll bump into them like, I love Trump. And it really speaks to that. I just don't think that there's enough of them in New England. You've got enough coastal elites that overcome that amount. But I've always found it a fascinating dynamic because if you think back, I don't know, 20, 30 years, all of those people would be Democrat, you know, union voters, uh, but, and a lot of them still are union members. They just now believe that Donald Trump is the, is, is the, the champion. It's just an interesting dynamic that's happened. All right. Connecticut, seven district, seven electoral votes will pop into, uh, the, the Biden column. Uh, New Jersey, again, like, I'm sorry if you think that New Jersey is a battleground state or ever will be. Maybe at some point down the future, maybe you can pull off a win here and there. Uh, or obviously there's a couple congressional districts uh, that, again, it's the same orphan theory. Like there's the Tom Kane district in the central part of the state, the southern part of the state, the, the New Jersey second congressional district, which is Cape May, uh, and that whole southern part of New Jersey along the water, Atlantic City South. That's a pretty Republican district. It's where Jeff Van Drew, if you remember, he was the Democrat that went in the Oval Office. It's a Democrat flip party, so now he's a Republican. That's a pretty good Republican district. So New Jersey does have pockets that Republicans can do well in, but that northern part of the state where Bob Menendez, ironically, hails from, has always been a big stronghold. And those are the cities. It's the urban areas out up there, the, the suburbs of New York that just have much more population. Uh, and then down through Trenton, et cetera. Okay, so we've added New Jersey's 14 in there. Biden's home state, well, I don't even know which home state he claims anymore, but one of them at least is Delaware. It only has three electoral votes, two senators, of which he was one for like 150 years, and one member of Congress. All three of Delaware's electoral votes are are in their column. Maryland, again, uh, yes, some success with Governor Larry Hogan as the two-term governor. He's running for the Senate. By the way, he has raised a boatload of cash. Uh, and no matter what you think about Larry Hogan, uh, and his opposition to Trump, if Republicans take the seat or really keep it in, in play, that's a huge coup. I mean, like this could, this, I mean, when it comes to Donald Trump getting back in office and passing his, getting his nominees through, et cetera, I mean, he may not be a pure hardcore conservative or MAGA guy, no argument there on that, but having that additional vote to get nominees through, to get the agenda through, I think would be critical. And it would deny the, the Dems a big, a big liberal. The two folks that are running in Maryland on the Democrat side, Allison also Brooks and David Trone. David Trone, by the way, is the founder of Total Wine. So next time you're at Total Wine, just saying you're kind of contributing to David Trone. Um, they're battling it out. Hogan leads both of them. Now, I think because he's a moderate to liberal, very liberal Republican, that's why he's doing well. I don't think there's any chance we carry that state. And I don't think anybody, I hope no one disagrees with me. So we're going to put all 10 of Maryland's congressional districts in there, uh, electoral votes. Now, DC gets three electoral votes as well. It's not a state, but they get three electoral votes. They're all going in here. Let me just give you, by the way, my quick PSA on on DC. And it's a reminder of what concerns me about Washington, DC. Here's the PSA, and this is the argument. When DC was created, they basically took parts of Virginia and parts of Maryland to create the District of Columbia, okay? And it was a perfect like square, 10 by 10 miles. That's what the Constitution sets out. In fact, where I live in Virginia was part of DC. What happened was in the late 1800s, DC wasn't using a lot of this because the whole idea was to set up a federal district. The founders didn't want the capital to be in its a state. They thought it'd be a conflict, right? So they said, we're gonna set up this federal district. We'll take part of it from Maryland, part of it from Virginia. Virginia got back its part. When you land at Reagan National Airport, that used to be DC. And then they gave it back. You're actually landing in Virginia now. So they gave it back. Here's why I think this matters. If DC ever became a state, and trust me, if we lost the presidency, the House and the Senate, that's on the map. They will take their two 
senators and it will never, ever vote. I mean, that that's a guaranteed two additional Dems. Guaranteed. No one will dispute that. That city votes 95 to 5. You will not, it will be so hard to get a Republican majority back in and any close to it because the Democrats would have an additional two. So make no mistake, when people talk to you about DC, and my, like my PSA is this, if you actually, when the Dems talk about Washington, D.C. and the right to vote and all this stuff. Number one, when you're moving there, you know it. Number two, I my proposal is the following. The part of Virginia that wasn't being used, they gave back to Virginia. Like I said, Alexandria, Arling, all that area, that used to be D.C., it got given back. If Maryland, if parts of D.C. aren't being used, in my area, my answer is you carve out the National Mall from the Capitol to the White House, carve that out, call it the Federal District where no one lives, and give the rest back to Maryland. It came from Maryland, give it back to Maryland, just like they did for Virginia. You don't need to create another state. The reason that Democrats want to create another state is they want two additional senators. It's a lie. When they tell you about voting, it's an easy solution. It was taken from Maryland, give it back to Maryland if it's not being used and carve out everything but the Capitol to the White House to create a federal district where no one lives. It would be easy peasy. Democrats want to create a false argument about voting rights. It's an easy solve and everyone can still vote and Maryland should be happy because that's more federal dollars. Anyway, there's my DC PSA. Okay, I will tell you this. I'm going to put Virginia in the Biden column. I live here. I hope it's not true. Fun Sean fact, I was the last Republican elector in 2004 to actually cast a Republican ballot. I was elected to serve the Commonwealth of Virginia, I went down to Richmond, I cast my vote for president, but I don't know that we're gonna see it anytime soon. Now, could we see this evolve? Yes, I do think that Virginia, especially after what Glenn Youngkin has done, uh, could be ripe. I just, it's, uh, we'll have to wait until the, the cycle progresses to see if any polling or anything changes. And frankly, if the Trump campaign puts any resources into Virginia, because that's how you would know it's happening. Hey, animal lovers, if you've been watching this show for a while, you know about my friend Leo Grillo and all the amazing work that he does to give animals, horses, cats, dogs, a lifelong sanctuary, not a shelter, not a place where they're going to get sent away, a sanctuary for life, a no kill sanctuary. That has been the mission of Leo Grillo, who started with just one dog, a Doberman and realized the amazing, great work that he could do to give animals the nutrition, the veterinary care that they need by founding Delta Rescue. And I've said this before, go to deltarescue.org. Just check out the videos and the amazing work that they're doing. Now, Leo has been able to do so much of this on his own, but it's through contributions like the ones from you and I, five, 50, a hundred, a thousand dollars that allow the work of Delta Rescue to continue. But if you can do more than that, if you can make Delta Rescue part of your estate, that's going to be critical to make this an enduring mission and to make sure that these dogs, cats, horses always have a lifelong no kill sanctuary. Please go to deltarescue.org and check out the work that they're doing and see what you can do to support it. All right. So where are we now? 217. On the Biden side, again, this is pretty close to what that consensus map showed, right? It said 221 for the Dems. So let's just pause there because that's what I think are givens on the Dem side. And let's start with Trump, okay? We're gonna start out West, we're gonna go the same way. Um, I'll start in Idaho because that's kind of the first one up to the top. Let's put Idaho's four electoral votes in the Trump column, okay? Uh, again, I don't think that's controversial. Move South. Nevada, we're gonna put the six there. Actually, hold on Nevada, let's hold that for now. I think that that's gonna be, uh, that's that's definitely a battleground. So let's take that back, my apologies, I got ahead of myself. Um, and then let's go back up top, we'll do Montana, we'll put that in, that's four, okay. Uh, we'll go Montana, the four electoral votes there, we're gonna give Wyoming's three, and Utah's six, okay. so. We're, we just took four states, unlike the Dems, four states only equals 18 on the Republican side. Isn't that interesting? Um, let's go back up north a little to the right, going heading east, North Dakota. We'll put the three North Dakota electoral votes in. And then Christy Nome's state there, South Dakota, we're going to add those three electoral votes to Trump. All right. 
So you can see we already got a lot of red on the map, but we're only up to 24 electoral votes. It starts to show you how different this all looks, right? Let's go south to Nebraska. Now, this was the other state that I was telling you about. We basically have the inverse of Maine. Trump will carry the state. He'll get the two at-large statewide electoral votes. Then Nebraska has three congressional districts. It's ironically, it's the same number. Nebraska's second congressional district is the one that Biden got last time. Uh, and so I think that one, let's just, for the sake of this map, let's do the same thing. We're gonna give Nebraska's four of their electoral votes to Trump, the two statewide and the other two, District 1 and District 3 to Trump. But District 2, we're gonna shade blue there. You can see it just pop up the tiny speck of blue. And therefore, we've now got 28 and we've got Biden at 218, okay? Republicans are, with all that red already on the map, only at 28. Um, which just tells you everything that we need to know. All right, let's go south again to Kansas. We'll add Kansas's six electoral votes there. And then we're gonna keep going south. We'll put Oklahoma's seven in that column. And finally, we get to a big prize, right? Um, Texas, 40 electoral votes. This is the big prize on the Republican side. We're gonna add all 40 electoral votes of Texas into the Republican column. One quick side note that I wanna just make it clear. Everyone assumes Texas is solid red. You know, look, Ted Cruz is on the ballot last time. He at this time, he had a very close race against Beto O'Rourke, you remember that? Just to give you a sense though, Texas, all of its electoral votes last time, the state was only won by just over five percentage points, 600,000 votes. That may sound like a lot, but with all the migration coming into Texas, especially from all the libs in California that don't like California, but that brought themselves down to Cal Texas. I'm just saying we got to keep an eye on Texas. It take nothing for granted. If you have folks that you know in Texas, make sure they're registering to vote and getting out the vote unless they're a bunch of liberals and tell them that they should just not register to vote. I'm kidding, kidding. I don't want to get sued or anything. Maybe not. Anyway, all right, so here's the thing. We've now added one of the big seats, one of those big states. We've got the Texas in. Let's go back north, okay, and go back into right there to Iowa. We're gonna add the six Iowa electoral votes into the Trump column, okay? And then we'll go south and add Missouri's 10 electoral votes, okay? Now think about this. Look at all the red after we add Missouri. We're still not at 100. We're at 97 electoral votes with all that red. This just shows you how much more difficult the map is for Republicans than it is for Democrats. We are going to head down to my old deputy's state where she is the governor, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Uh, I'm so proud of her. I just had to say it that way because I, it's all I can, my only connection now. Anyway, the governor there, she will deliver Arkansas and its six electoral votes. Uh, so we finally are over 100 with Arkansas at 103. Keep moving south a little. We go to Louisiana and add the eight electoral votes that Louisiana has, okay? Uh, we'll keep going back up to the top, moving down. All right, so I wanna go to Indiana. 11 electoral votes for Indiana. We're gonna make those red, okay? And then we'll move a little bit down and hit Kentucky that eight, so we've added Indiana's 11 and Kentucky's eight, okay? Here we are now, 130, unbelievable, right? Uh, let's go to Tennessee, 11 electoral votes in Tennessee. I don't think, again, this is a questionable state, so we add the 11 there. And then Mississippi six, again, no question, right, that Mississippi's gonna go in that direction. And since you're already down there, why don't you pop Alabama over to the right in there as well? So that adds, uh, Alabama into that mix, okay? And then let's go back north again, and we're gonna come down from Ohio. Ohio, um, we're gonna add the 17 electoral votes there. One quick thing, I've talked about this on the show before, there are two states that Biden potentially couldn't be on the ballot. Alabama and Ohio, they're, the nominee of the party gets decided at the convention. The conventions actually mean something legally. It, it's when they confer the legal status of them on the, the, as being the nominee. And there's a lot of financial, uh, 
access to funds that go along with that. And so it's a big deal. What happens at the convention isn't just a party and like a, a bunch of people yelling out numbers. It is the legal conferring of the nomination on that party's nominee. Biden's in trouble right now in Ohio and Alabama because the convention happens after the state deadline for the ballots. They've warned them on there. I just say that because this is interesting. I don't think they'll win either Ohio or Alabama, but how, what a rookie mistake. They just assume that Ohio and Alabama would fix it. That's, that's their view right now. We'll see. I don't think so. Neither Ohio or Alabama. Why is it their job to fix a Biden mistakes ineptitude? I mean, these guys literally like didn't send in their homework and said, oh, don't worry. The teacher won't grade it or whatever. I, my, if I were those two secretaries of state, I'd say, Hey, just cause you guys are dumb dumbs. It's not our fault to fix your mistake. All right. West Virginia has four electoral votes. Let's shade that in for team Trump. Four electoral votes, as I said. Remember, Joe Manchin's not running for re-election. Not that that was really going to affect the presidential race, but this is one of those big pickups for the Senate. This is what gets Republicans right now back to parity, 50-50. And if you win the presidency, that's super helpful. That's where I think we're going to see some success on the on the Senate side. Okay. All right. Let's go back up north for a second. We talked about Maine. You see that one congressional district, Maine's second congressional shaded red. We already counted that one, so we don't need to recount it. Um, We're going to move south down to South Carolina. We're going to add South Carolina's nine electoral votes. Okay. And then I think we can pretty much say that Florida is, is a, is a given. Okay. I will be careful. I think that like these states where abortion is going to be on the ballot to be codified, which is what the Dems are trying to do. Rick Scott's got a tough Senate race down there. Just saying, I will shade Republican red for Florida right now, put it in Trump's column, but don't, let's, we're gonna keep an eye on this. All right, let's bring the map back up. These are the given states. Where are we now? Okay, not far off the consensus map, 218 to 216. Now, let me take these state by state. New Hampshire, I'm gonna give it to Biden. I'm gonna give him the four electoral votes. In 2016, Trump, only lost by two points. In 2020, he lost by seven. I still think there's a chance. I believe in New Hampshire. Sorry. Um, But at this state of the race, uh, I will say that in absent any real polling or signs, whatever, I I will put it in the Biden column. Um, They do have a statewide governor's race. John Sununu, or uh, (laughs) John Sununu, the former governor, uh, the current Sununu, uh, is not running for re-election. So I, I just... We'll see, but I don't, I, I don't see any evidence right now that, that it's going to be contested. I would love to see it. So let's put that there. North Carolina, Trump won in 2016 and in 2020. Um, I'll give the 16 electoral votes to Trump at this phase. So let's put the 16 electoral votes in the Trump map. Now, I will say this. In 2016, he won by just over three points. Uh, it was just over a point in 2020. Very close. So... I, I will do this at this phase, but I'm going to, I, I, I'm a little hesitant. I might, let's actually, let's go for pink. Let's make it pink because I think that all the evidence right now is that it stays with Trump. There is a statewide race right now. You guys have heard, uh, you know, that Mark Robinson, the Lieutenant governor is running for governor. We'll see if the Dems play or how much they do, but this is, this is not a given. I will put it in Trump's column, at least for now, so that we can move through the map. Um, now, Georgia, Interestingly enough, I do feel confident to move Georgia into the red for right now. Let's move its 16 electoral votes into the Trump column. Trump won by five points in 2016. Uh, and Biden, in the books, it's a two point win for him. Um, for, by, excuse me, two tenths of a point. What was I saying? I talked about this earlier 2.23 of a percent, 11,779 votes. I think a lot has changed in Georgia. There's been a lot of movement um, to the right. You've seen a lot of wins. I think the the lawfare, et cetera, et cetera, favors Trump. So I'm going to put that into the Trump column for now. Let's move back west for a second. I want to. I, I'm willing to put Nevada in the Trump column for now. He lost in 2016 by 2.5 uh, in 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 2016, uh, and pretty much the same in 2020, but right now the real clear average of polls has Trump up 45, 47.5 to Biden's 44.3, which is just over three points. Still within the margin of error, but it's trending the right way. Now, here's the one caveat I would add with, with Nevada. They are one of those states, we heard this earlier on the show, 
um, in one of the episodes that, that sends everybody a mail-in ballot, right? And absentee. So I, I'm a little cognitive, but I think it's, it's flowing the right way. It's got a statewide contested Senate race, Jackie Rosen there. Uh, very, very, it's going to, it's going to be in play. There's no question about it. But I think right now at this phase, let's, let's put this in the Trump column. Okay. Michigan. I, I, let's shade that light. Well, let's, let's shade that light. Re, uh, oh, where are we? I'm just, let's, let's think this out for a second. Trump won by 10,700 votes. I, I mentioned that earlier in 2016, 0.22 of a percent. In 2020, Biden won by 150,000 votes. All right. For the sake of argument, just for now, shade that light blue just to like, let's, let's, let's do this and see what happens. Okay. Uh, by the way, I missed, I should have done this earlier. My apologies. Alaska, I, I, I'm sorry, Alaskans, my apologies. Uh, I see, I see you guys down there. Let's put the Alaska in, in, uh, in dark blue. We know Alaska is going to go. I mean, excuse me, dark red. We know Alaska is going Trump and we know Hawaii is going to go blue. So my apologies to our, our last couple of states. Uh, but. I missed you. I'm sorry. I, I was too focused on the continental United States. I will never do it again. I promise. Well, maybe again. Um, so here's where we are. This is where I think it's going to get interesting. Um, because we are now down to the handful of states to three states that make a difference. Um, I think that these three states, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania are the whole ball game. This is where I think this is going to come down. For now, let's put Wisconsin in the Trump column. Or actually shade it light pink just to see how this plays out for a second. Okay. He's at 267. He's three shy. Okay. Now you see what I'm talking about. Look at this. You got Pennsylvania and Arizona. Either one of those puts Trump over the top. Let's just for a second put Pennsylvania in the Biden column. He says he's the son of, you know, of, era, of Pennsylvania, of Scranton. Trump won Pennsylvania by 0.5 in 2016. Biden is in the books with just over a point margin in 2020. Biden is leading by 0.1%, a tenth of a percent, which is nothing. It's not even a statistical heat. That's literally within the margin error. It's 46.2 to 46.3. That's, that's a tie, no matter how you play it. Um, that is why he spends every waking, breathing moment in Pennsylvania. Okay, and let's put Arizona. I mean, you can see where we are right now, folks. Arizona is is you know could be the game right now. The eleven electoral votes. Give them to Biden for a second. Shade that light blue for me. Boom, two seventy one. He wins. Take it away. Shade it pink right now. Show me what happens. Boom, Trump wins. This is what I'm talking about, folks. Look at all these states. The, the, look at right now. So let's just say with the hard push, right, 235, 241, I'm showing you 25 electoral votes that I think the Dems are leaning in their direction, 37 that are leaning in the direction of Donald Trump. Okay? Donald Trump, again, you, you take any one of those states, if he can pull off a win in Michigan and you shade that differently, you take Michigan, take Michigan just for the sake of this and go from shading it from light blue to light pink. I mean, to pink, light pink, just to pink. I'll show you what happened. Boom, you're at 293. So this thing could go in a lot of directions real quick. This is why I wanted to show you this now and at this phase of the election, okay? We've got a lot of big issues out there, but also we can play with this map a little and start to figure out, you know, you can get really close to two, to 270, 270, 269 to 269, all these scenarios. But this is why it was important to do it at this phase to give you guys an idea. Look at the light pink and the light blue. This is where this is going to happen. Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, Arizona, Wisconsin, Nevada, North Carolina in particular, 93 electoral votes. But again, a part of this is just to equip you with the knowledge of how close this is and how many states are in play and how one or two can make a big difference between getting to 270 and coming up a little shy. So I hope this gives you a sense. I want to do this again. I look forward to your feedback. Tell me in the comment section if you like this, what I'm missing, what you want to see more of, how much further deep dive that we can go down. But you see where this map stands. So 
I appreciate it. Again, I bookmark this, share it. This will tell you everything you need to know about where we're headed in the next several months. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate everything that you do to support this show. Uh, please continue to subscribe. Tell your friends about the show because there's more of this coming your way. YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Go to all of them. They're all free. So you can subscribe to everything. And that's what helps us grow the show and allows great sponsors to keep supporting us. I appreciate you tuning in. I'll see you next time on The Sean Spicer Show. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.